Hello, this is Telecom TV. I'm talking with Fu Xiao, who is technical manager, the network department with China Mobile, which is, of course, the world's largest mobile telephone operator. Fu Xiao, you are in far away in Beijing. We are here in London. It's great to talk to you and a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you. Let's begin with this. In the um, 5G cloud native demo, you talked about China Mobile's core to edge structure in its rollout of 5G. How did you decide on that model and what does it enable you to do? Okay, actually, uh, I guess for most of uh, the countries that has uh, such a large space uh, where you have huge scale of uh, network, the kind of structure is something that you have to choose. You know, you have to like ac accumulate on the core network in some uh, centralized uh, provinces or districts so that that will be easier for your people to maintain the whole network and also to, to share the resources since we're bringing everything to the cloud. And uh, but you also want to provide uh, the, the low latency uh, services to all the end users, which means that you should have uh, distributed edge cloud stay close with uh, all the end users. So naturally, you will end up with that kind of uh, structure and model. So moving on, now you're a developer and community leader in several open source projects, including the likes of OPNFV and Acrano and others. What are the principal things that you have um, learned building frameworks and capabilities in open source side by side with vendors, integrators and other operators? Yeah, we are actually, uh, I guess, one of the first operators that actually play in the uh, open source community. Uh, Back into the old days, uh, you know, traditionally operators are more used to working in the standardized group. I first began with my career in the IETF. Uh, that is really a, some, some standardized group. And then when we uh, decided to work on NFV and move to the cloud, we decided that probably we need to work, learn from the IT industry, where open source is actually quite so important for that industry. The open source community actually help IT industry iterate quite quickly in the passing years. So we kind of understand uh, open source is as, as something first. It could act as a what we call de facto standards for us. It's almost like the standardized uh, groups, uh, communities uh, for operators. And uh, secondly, we're expecting it could iterate even quickly, uh, even more quickly than the uh, standardized group. Because when you have a, a, a technology that you have uh, more thousands of uh, developers to, to help contribute, that will really mean something to, to us. So when, when, when I'm playing with uh, all these uh, vendors, partners in the different open source communities, we, I actually share the, the benefits that this uh, open source community bring to us. So what feedback do you give executives at your company to harness open source innovation? We actually always uh, have to do this uh, every year or sometimes even every half year about this question, like what kind of uh, benefit we actually uh, bring to our company from all these uh, open source organizations. Uh, I, I actually try to answer my manager this question from several different aspects. First, uh, we are actually using what I said, uh, the, the de facto standards that actually these open source community help us to build. There are something in the software, if you want to define the standards, if you want to define the interface, it's actually not possible to put that in some documents. You have to put it into codes. So that is how open source uh, help us. When we really have our requirements, the best way is to work in the community and explain our requirements and even translate them into some of the codes. That will really help these requirements to, to realize in a quite short time. Uh, so that is one thing. The second thing, uh, now the open source communities like OpenStack, like uh, CNCF, they are growing quite big. So 
it's it's like a forum that uh, you could explain what you need and why you need this in these forums, and try to persuade everybody there to understand the requirements. Uh, my feeling that for every uh, open source community, if your requirement actually makes sense, there there will be some some people, some developer uh, that will interested in that and will help you to review that. So that is the mostly the, the benefits that we actually ex uh, could could expect from all these uh, different open source uh, uh, communities. How do you see the open source networking system developing in China? And how can ecosystem participants take advantage of open source, contribute to the community and help ensure that their solutions are compatible with a cloud native future? Open source networking in China uh, we actually expecting uh, lots of uh, developers, contributors uh, in China for the recent years. I think that is something you can actually observe from all the different open source communities. OpenStack, uh, CNCF, uh, all the biggest uh, uh, communities, we could see lots of uh, Chinese faces there. Uh, Chinese companies these years, they are, they are getting close to these community, trying to understand how open source is running, how we could contribute to the open source and also benefit uh, ourselves. So that is something actually we are expecting to happen uh, even uh, much better in the following years. When operators actually bring their uh, requirements, scenarios, and even some of their codes into the community, we are trying to help uh, the uh, communities to understand the, the, the real requirements here and how to be compatible with our network. Uh, if uh, the, the, uh, the, the other vendor partners, I think uh, vendor partners, when they have contributors bring to this community, they are also expecting the, the end users, the op operators could bring these things to share with them. That will really help them to do the, uh, the, the com compatible. Uh, you know, also there are lots of uh, uh, interoperability testing actually happen now in the open source community that will also help to, to enhance this, uh, this, this uh, factor. What do you think are the remaining major obstacles to China Mobile's 5G rollout that are being addressed in the open source communities right now? Uh, the actually the, the biggest challenge now for us uh, is uh, something that w my department I'm, and I myself is actually putting huge effort into is how to do the integration and the interoperability. When we move to cloud and even to cloud native, that actually means that we are breaking our network uh, to bring more vendors into this network. Traditionally, we have like bulky hardwares that bonded to each and every vendors. Now we are bringing like uh, commandery servers, we're bringing uh, clouds, we're bringing different lar larger vendors, small vendors into the cloud. But how to have all these vendors, uh, products, software and hard ha hardware to work together uh, smoothly, how to ensure that their performance still reach our like 5.9 or 6.9 requirements. Uh, that is the, the, the biggest challenge actually for us. And that is also why we, we go to the open source community for help. Like what I just said, open source is a de facto standard that will help different vendors to understand each other through this platform. And open source also um, provide the, the, the capability for people to do interoperability because it, it provides lots of software-based interfaces that help these uh, vendors to do their product inter interoperability testing. So that is actually something we rely a lot on the open source community. How would you like to see the communities evolve the better to meet the needs of operators and to support the entire ecosystem? Actually, my feeling that although operators actually engage a lot in, in all these uh, different open source communities, but um, I have to be frank. But uh, I don't think uh, the, the operator voice is not that is not uh, well listened <laughs> sometimes. 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, like what what we are doing actually in CNCF, uh, we are trying to shout out to 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 you know uh, uh, that many of uh, developers of about the requirement from uh, you know an, an operator's point of view. That is actually I think the first time that operators actually stand on that stage to explain us. Uh, the, the requirements actually from a telco operator. I think that is a good ch chance that that is a good beginning. After that keynote, there are some vendors that com came to, to me and uh, asked about the actual scenarios, what we're actually doing. I think that that is a start that we could understand each other. And uh, I hope that uh, probably in the future, probably in CNCF, uh, OpenStack and other open source communities, we could have uh, more chance like that to, to explain us now, ourselves and make people understand our scenarios and models better. So Fu Chiao, how important are the partners and the ecosystems? I think that is the... That is actually uh, something that could really uh, make sure that this uh, new 5G uh, cloud could work. Otherwise, if we still fall into like a limited number of partners, uh, it's actually no reason why we do all these transformation for the telco operators. Do you think that service providers moving to a cloud native environment will speed 5G implementation? That is actually something we are trying. Uh, and see how that will help us. We see a lot of, uh, you know, technical potential from the cloud native. We are doing huge amounts of testing on that. Uh, we are expecting that the cloud native could uh, bring us, you know, uh, you know, service-based uh, architecture, could, could bring us a uh, quick delivery of the services. But let's see how we, we actually have all these uh, tested and try out and let's see how the result is. Okay, thank you. Again, a mention about collaboration, the importance of collaboration in this whole thing. How important is collaboration? How do you ensure that that collaboration continues effectively? Actually, uh, like what we are talking about a lot about uh, open source today, I think that is a good platform that uh, people are, uh, are collaborating, uh, trying to understand each other, understand the detailed requirement in each software, in each interface, and that is actually a good base for all the afterwards collaboration. In the demo, there were numerous participants and participations and it's been said that this shows the willingness for the community to be involved and that it's a, reached a critical mass. Is that the case? I think, uh, yes, that demo actually has uh, lots of contributors, uh, which actually shows the enthusiasm that uh, not only telco operators, but also different vendors, uh, we are trying to try out the cloud native 5G to see how these uh, fantastic technology could bring us to could bring the benefit for the new 5G network cloud. And we actually have, a, I think, quite good result. It is a proof of concept that telling us something could actually work and it could really repeat quite good, iterate a lot in quite a short time. And I think that is a, at least a good sign for this uh, new 5G cloud. Pu Chao, thank you so much. Thank you.